this is a highly practical custom apron. So this is not mine, as you can tell as I'm swimming in it. It doesn't even have pockets. I hiked it up and I created the pockets. This is my husband. I married a giant. I mean, I'm only 5'4", so, and he's like six foot something. So I married a giant. He's the one who does all the cooking. <laughs> So of course, one size fit all aprons doesn't work for him. Also don't fit me particularly well, but him it's even worse. So this is a highly customizable, practical apron. There's no pockets here. There, is, there could be pockets here. He didn't want pockets. You can have thick straps. You can have thin straps. You can have straps that are in a fixed position. You can do whatever you want with this apron. This apron is covered in canvas in the front and then fully lined, fully lined with cotton on the backside because I don't do bias tape. I, I have never really been a fan of bias tape as much as possible. I use it under duress. That's about it. So we're going to jump into this project. Keep in mind that I'm making this for him. You can do it however you want for your own. And I highly recommend looking at kind of the techniques I use and then going off into the rabbit hole and doing your own thing. When I do my novelty apron, you'll kind of see like other techniques you can do. Granted, that apron isn't meant to be worn, whereas this one's all practical. This is meant to be worn and covered in smoothie, spaghetti. Oh, I have so many thoughts. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm going to jump into it now. We're going to start with a basic apron format, which is you have the very top, which can be as close to your collarbone or as low as you want, and, th and then you have your hem. And then this is kind of where the tricky part starts, is you need to figure out from the top of your apron to how far down that you want the ties, which is what determines this measurement. So when you're measuring, you measure from the center of your chest down to where approximately your waistline, your fashion waist, your hips, wherever you want to tie your apron. So this measurement on my husband is 19 inches. So essentially, from here to here needs to be 19. And I'm writing upside down, so does that look like a 9? Or does um, that look like a P? It looks like a P. Eh, we'll have to figure it out. See, numbers upside down is not the easiest thing to do. Okay. This measurement up here, he wants to be 18 inches. Yay, I got that one. Okay. The hem, which is kind of how wide he wants this, is 40, and I know this is going to be hard, 2. Okay, and the total length, the length that he wants from the top to the bottom, he wants as 40. So when you're going from the edge of where the top is and kind of creating that armhole, you need to kind of drop it down and then make a curve. Now you kind of want it to be really steep on these two edges and then just kind of shallow from there. So it really depends on the body and if you want to just cut your um, 42 by 40 width and then hold it up to your body and then pin and cut, that's a great option. So that you can follow that curve so that you're not cutting off too much or not enough, because you need to, yourself to be mobile. And then you just need to make sure that you have that 40, uh, 40 inch length. So because of the fact that this is going to be folded in half when we cut it, you need to remember to add your seam allowance and divide by two. So this 18 will become a 20, which is 10 inches, this 42 is going to have another 2, so it's going to be 22 inches, but this 40 length is going to be the same and cut on the fold. I am not using bias tape on this because bias tape is not my best friend and the fact that we re it's really hard to come by. So I'm actually going to cut two of these, one in the pattern of a canvas fabric that he wants on the top, and then a black cotton in order, um, um, in order to make sure that it's double width. He does not want pockets. 
However, if you did want pockets, you would need to figure out placement and whether or not you would want them square, um, like this, if you would like it rounded on the bottom, or if you would just want to make it one solid piece, like this, and then sew lines in between to kind of divide it up. And placement would depend on you as well. So whatever floats your boat, this is your custom item. This is just how I'm making his. I am not including pockets. This body part cut out. We also need to figure out straps. So you would measure kind of like if you were just making a rounded strap, just kind of how it would go around the neck. However, if you're like my husband who wants it to be tied, you would need two long lengths in order for your, uh, for you to be able to tie it. Now he also wants them to be four inches wide. So when I cut this, it's going to be four inches wide and 30 inches long. And, but that's not including seam allowance yet. He also wants to have it tie around here. So this is also going to be four inches wide, but it's going to be 35 inches long. So when I cut it, I'm going to ensure that I add my seam allowance and that I cut it out of both the fabric he wants on top and the cotton he wants on the bottom. So for this particular one that I'm working, the total length needs to be 40, which means I'm adding an inch on either side in order for seam allowance. So I go down the fold and I mark 42. Now, the next thing I need to do at that 42 mark is the hem. So because this is folded, um, whatever you want your measurement to be needs to be divided into two. So let's say that I wanted to make a 43 inch hem, or 42 inch hem plus two for seam allowance. Well, that's 44, which is the width of this fabric, which makes my life a little bit easier. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mark that. Okay. As you can tell, I'm making this for someone who's very much on the large end. Okay. So now I have the total length of my fabric marked. So at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and cut it because the next thing I need to do involves entirely working on the top. Top. The very top of the apron, he wants 18 inches wide. Add an inch for seam allowance and remember that you're working with a fold. So if you add an inch to 18, you're going to make it into 10. So at the very top, I'm measuring 10 and putting a dot. Now the next thing that you need to worry about is the slope that goes from the top of the apron down the chest to behind where the ties are going to be fastened. So you need to measure how far down that measurement needs to be. So where the salvage edges are, I'm going to go down and measure 19, okay, and put another dot. And thankfully, because I don't need to cut off these salvage edges and they'll just be part of my seam allowance for the end, all I have to do is just put a dot. Now, the trouble is for this next part is that you kind of have to freehand it because of the fact that this portion is connecting this top dot to this dot down here and a slope that's going to work for the body you're going to put it on. Generally, you want this slope right here where this line is to be kind of straight by the end. Whereas you want this to more or less just drop down and then kind of meet that slope. So this is where I'm going with for his because he is a pretty big guy, so I'm leaving a pretty decent armhole to drop down. Now, the other thing that he wants is pockets. So because I have this space right here, I'm going to go ahead and take a ruler and make a pocket and then kind of show you guys what I've got in the aftermath. So for the straps, because this is a pretty big guy, we're doing four inch, which also means I'm adding seam allowance, so I'm adding another inch. So all of these are in five increments or five inch increments. I'm gonna use my rotary cutter. This is like a pizza cutter except much sharper and should not be ever used on food. Um, the guard is up until 
I expose the blade. You press firmly, and normally you would use a ruler, but a ru ruler would ex uh, make this a bit harder for you. Um, press firmly and try to slide through all the fabric all in one go. Slow and steady wins the race. So every time you do this, keep in mind that it is slightly dangerous. So if you're a child, you should be definitely doing this under supervision and make sure that your fingers are not in the way. See how I stopped in the middle of this? I'm going to move this to the side and then keep going down the line. It is preferred to do it all in one go as much as possible, but sometimes you have to adjust yourself. Okay? So slow, steady, adjust as needed, or save yourself the hassle and just use a pair of scissors. So I've cut the straps down to size. So if you look here, both of them are five inch width, but one of these is 36 inches and the other one is 32 inches. And the fact of that is that my husband doesn't want a loop that goes around his neck but instead would rather tie it. He also then informed me that he didn't actually want a pocket, so that just ended up being next. So my next thing is that I'm going to cut all of these pieces out again with black cotton on the side that isn't going to be necessarily the section that's touching him. So I'll be right back as soon as I'm done. Hi, so I have the front and the back cut out. So very massive apron, very massive guy. So the straps are two different lengths. I have them, or, or at least half of them already pinned. So I've got two different lengths. This shorter one is going to end up here at the top, and then the longer one will be down here where it wraps around the back of him. So when you pin these, make sure that you make uh, have right sides together, so pretty side to pretty side. I know that's a bit hard with black cotton to figure out which is which. But just do your best. Um, so I'll pin the rest of this off screen. These will have to be sewn, turned, sewn again before they can be attached to the front and then have the back and the front sewn together and then pretty much be done. Um, so I'll get to pinning and then I'll show you how to sew the straps. So I've sewn all the way around and I'm getting to point so I've sewn the bottom flap square so I'm going to trim the corners without cutting the seam Turn that inside out and then get started on the next one. And then snip, and then snip, and then do that to all the straps. So 
ahead and top stitch all of the straps. repeat with all four. So I have my husband's apron. This is the side that, so we've got armhole and then we've got the side. So I'm going to take one of the long straps, which has already been top stitched and feed it in here. And since I'm doing a one inch seam, I want it to be like this on the inside because I want right side touching right side so that when I flip it out, it'll be on the correct side. And then I can pin the rest of this seam. I'm going to repeat that on the other side, but I'm going to do the top first. Okay, so here's my top. Okay, so I'm going to have two shorter straps up on the top, and they're already top stitched and ready to go. So when I put these in, I want to make sure that the side, is each fabric is touching the corresponding fabric. So when I feed this in, it might be easier if I turn the camera. Put this in. And again, make sure that it's one inch away from the arm seam. Wrap it in between, pin in place and repeat for the other half. So I'm going to put another strap right here and another one right here and then I'm going to sew the whole thing. Around, I'm going to be doing a one inch hem all the way around. I'm going to be feeling with my hands underneath to make sure my strap, uh, my straps are not getting in the way. And I am leaving a hole on the very bottom of the hem of the apron in order to turn this inside out. And the handy thing about that hole underneath is that I can then put my hand through it and make sure that I'm moving the straps out of the way when I need to.
feel like I should have moved myself to the other side of the table so that I would have enough room on the other side of me. All right, now it's time to clip your corners like you did on the straps. Also to snip in between this seam, so the, between the seam and the edge of the fabric on the curved edges of the armholes so that when you turn it inside out, it doesn't pucker. On the last step, which is just top stitching the entire thing. So I'm, again, I'm starting at the bottom hem and then going all the way around. So I'm laying the strap flat because of the fact that I don't want to sew it in one direction or the other.
and there we go. We are completely done. All right, awesome sauce. Ranger says, please like, comment, subscribe, and share, and have a great day.